Rock Fishing Basics, how to assess a location. Hi, my name's Roger Osborne. I'm super pumped because I'm fishing again. And in today's video, I've come down to a headland and I'm gonna see what awesome fish that I catch. And I'll be teaching you what you look for when you come down to a particular location. How do you decide where you're going to fish and what options do you have? So there'll be a lot of instruction in this video, which I know will be beneficial to you, especially if you're starting out on your rock fishing journey. Make sure that you like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so that you know when new videos are coming up. It really helps my channel and I appreciate it. Let's start fishing. I haven't fished in this location for quite a while and I've come down here today it's blowing, the weather report said a northwest wind at about 30 kilometres an hour. So it was fairly strong. But I was reasonably confident because the headland that I'm on is like a big finger that sticks out into the ocean. And the beauty of that is, if the weather's coming from one direction, you can fish off one side. Or if the weather was coming, say, from that direction, I could fish off the other side. So either way, depending on the wind and the swells, one side of this headland is going to be good because one side you'll have the wind behind you. And so the wind is actually coming, you can't see it, you will in a minute from over there, and it's blowing this way. So this spot here looks fantastic, looks really good. And um, it'll be actually really pleasant fishing down there, it's very safe. Today you've got swell of, of about a metre, but in this spot it never really breaks here unless in big swell. And you can stand really nice and close to the water, you can get close to the fish, it makes it easy to land fish. And considering what I was doing today, my basic strategy is I'm going to fish with two lines. I'm going to cast one line right out the back with a squid bait for snapper and I'm going to put that in a rod holder and leave that there and just let it do its thing. And hopefully a snapper comes along, bends my rod over and I catch it. While that's going on, I'm going to be fishing with whole pilchards and no sinker. So I'm going to fish with an unweighted pilchard that'll just waft down in the water column. Because the wind will be behind me, it'll help me cast that pilchard. I'll be able to flick it up into the air and get really good distance even though I've got no sinker. I love fishing that way because it's really natural and the boat just, the boat, not the boat, the bait just slowly, naturally wafts around and sinks towards the bottom. I've also noticed something, it's been probably, I don't know how long it's been since I've been here, maybe, could be four or five months actually. But this little bay here is normally full of sand and I can see that the sand's all been washed out of this bay and there's patches of sand and reef. That's really good because that's going to mean that my species I can potentially catch will be broader. Whereas I may mainly catch things like salmon and tailor and trevally, because I've got broken reef here now, I'm more likely to catch a snapper on my floating pilchard in close. So that's awesome. And I'm going to get a bit of a burly trail going as well. I'm going to chop up some old pilchards and chuck them in the water. So. I'm just going to give you a look at this setup. So I'm going to have the camera look at this side where I'm going to fish and then I'm going to pan around the whole headland so that you can see the setup of where I am. As I mentioned, this headland goes like a finger out into the ocean. It's awesome. So beautiful. And you can fish this side or you can fish the other side. What a cracking spot. But you know, there are a lot of places like this up and down the coast which give you the options of fishing each side. And the wind is blowing that way. So if we pan around slowly, we'll be able to see on, this is where I'm pointing to now is north. So that's north and that's south. And you can see here on the north side, there's a really long straight edge and you've got deep water right up to the rocks. So you could very easily fish off that side. I think it's time to grab my gear and get into it. My rigging, I've already pre-made some rigs so I'm pretty organised. I'm going to get my snapper bait out first. 
and then I'm going to start to burly and play around. And as the sun gets a little bit lower, fish should start to come around. Now my first priority today is to cast out my snapper bait. I'm going to show you the bait that I've got. Essentially, it's a squid tentacle that I've thread onto this hook like a worm. And then I've got a bit of foam rubber on the hook, leaving the barb exposed. Not foam rubber, sorry, styrofoam. The styrofoam causes the bait to float up and keeps it out of the rocks and the weeds. And then this part of my rig is running. And then I have a swivel going down to a snapper sinker down the bottom. So the distance between the snapper sinker and the top section is probably half a metre. Then I've got a short leader, a short running leader with my squid bait. And the line that I'm using on this rod is 15 kilo. I've got it on a large spinning reel. You can see the reel that I've got here. It's a large spinning reel and I'm using a 12 foot rod. So my plan is to pelt this bait out the back and I have a rod holder which I made up, which is made out of some aluminium. And like a lot of locations along the coast, there are holes that have been made by fishermen over the years. So there's one here that I've located on the rock. You can see where the tip of my pole is. There's a hole there. And I'm gonna put my pole in there like that. Then I'm gonna cast this line out and set it. <coughs> now, it would be a good problem if I get a bite quick. I'm hoping to go over about 20 metres from here and start burling up and fishing. Just the way the setup is, I can't stand close to this line. So really, I'm trusting that a fish is going to take it, hook itself, and then wait for me to come and get it. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to chuck it out now. There's a few little waves rolling in here. Not too much. I could get further out if I go a bit closer, but I have my I have my spikes on my feet, so the spikes give me grip on the rocks. And in between the waves, I'm just going to walk down onto there. Once this wave washes out of the way and I can see where I'm going, I'm just going to walk down onto here because I can gain an extra 10 metres by doing this. There's no big waves coming. Okay, well that's good. That was a nice cast. Get back up here. That's not dangerous at all there. It's pretty calm. So I cast a fair way out then. I'm, I'm guessing at least 80 metres probably. And I'm going to leave this guy here. Just set the drag a little bit so that if something decent takes it, it can pull a little bit of line. And uh, now I'm going to go over and get set up with my other fishing. Now wouldn't that be lovely if a nice three or four kilo snapper grabbed that? That would be fantastic. All right, I'm going to head back over there. So I'm walking down here because this is where I'm going to be fishing with my floating pilchards and flicking them out there, but I'm going to chuck a bit of burley out in the water. I'm just watching my rod, which is over there. My other rod, that is. So I'm just going to get down here and uh, get down here near the edge. Now, the seagulls will probably knock a bit of this stuff off, but hopefully not too much. Some of it can float around and feed the fish. I've just got a bunch of stuff out of my freezer that I wanted to get rid of. Some pilchards and different things. Some bits of fish fillet. There's a bit of a wash just there to my right. That looks awesome. That's perfect. Because the water that's coming in here is just swirling right about there. There's a nice little eddy and a little current in there. So, any burley that I chuck in here, any burley that I chuck in this little wash is going to waft out there and it will attract fish. 
I actually hadn't really noticed that before, so that's really good. Chuck a few of these things out there. I'm always keeping my eye on these waves. Okay. Well, that's a bit of burly, that's great. <laughs> now, my other rod is just out there on the point. I haven't really seen any bites. I haven't really seen any bites with that as yet. But I'm happy to let that stay there. This is one of the strategies that rock fishermen do a lot up and down the coast and have done for decades. You come down, you put a nice bait out the back. While your bait's out the back, then you can play around and fish. And you're kind of covering two areas when you do it that way. That's something that I do a lot. Well, I'm gonna get my other line in the water. So this is my other setup. I've got a slightly smaller spinning reel. This one is actually spooled with 20 pound line, 20 pound mono. And this is a light uh, 12 foot rod. I actually use this off the beach a lot, but I'm just gonna be flicking unweighted pilchards. And all I've got on here is a set, oops, come back here, is a set of three gang torques. It's really, really simple. No swivel, nothing. I've just tied to the end of the gang hooks. And I'm going to be putting whole pilchards on these hooks, like so. You've seen me do this a lot of times before, I'm sure. The way to know where the hooks go is to, oops, I'll just move this. If you're not, ha not doing it all the time, you want the end hook to go through the eye. So you can line them up like that to give you an idea of where the hooks need to go. Once you've got the end hook in place, the rest of it is easy. You put that one through. So you've just got to wiggle these other hooks a bit. Put that one through, then you swing it around. Put your second hook through the middle of the fish. Then you swing it around and you put your top hook through the eye of the fish like that. So basically, that's the bait that I'm chucking out in this little wash. And five minutes ago, I was chucking out just some bits of fish and squid and stuff that I had in my freezer into that wash. So I burlied it a little bit. Now, it's gonna be dark in about one hour. So I've really got about an hour to fish this spot, to burly up, fish with pilchards, and keep my eye on that rod. And then occasionally I'll go and check it, pull it in, put a new bait on if necessary. But I fully expect to catch some fish out here. We'll just see what species are around tonight. So I'm gonna head over there now. Flick out my pilly. When you're doing this type of fishing with no sinker, you need to keep in touch with your bait. Now I can see a little wave coming through here. It's always good to watch and see how it's gonna react. But I know that this, you don't get any big waves breaking here because this is quite deep. And in general, the waves are relatively small today. So my goal is to cast this pilchard out at the back of this little eddy, this little wash that's here. And because there's a, a little bit of a breeze behind me, actually there's a hole in the rocks here, I wouldn't want to turn in that. So I've got to be aware of that. So let's see how long it takes to get a bite. I'm going to flick this pilchard out. Okay, now he sailed out a long way actually. So I'll take a few steps back. I don't have to stand quite that close. And I'm going to try and keep in touch with that bait just by winding up the slack. I want to be able to feel it. If I put a sinker on, I'm going to get to the bottom much quicker and my chance of being snagged is much higher which when I'm using a, a floating bait, I'm minimizing my chances of getting snagged on the bottom. Although that does still happen sometimes. It's a great time of the afternoon to be fishing. Okay, I just had a bit of a nibble then. I'm getting another nibble, but I'm not quite sure it's coming towards me, I'm actually going to just strike. 
it felt small. All right, so I'm going to wind my line in. I was getting some small bites then, and they've just bitten the belly out of the pilchard. So I'm actually going to leave him on and chuck him back out again. Seeing that little hole in the rock there, I'm going to stay over here because I don't want to not remember that and then hook a fish and step in a hole. I don't really want to do that. What I think I may do in a minute is actually throw a bit more burly out into that wash. And I might even move over and stand over there, which is closer to the wash. Now I'm getting some nibbles, but it's not big, it's just something small. It's just hacking away at that little pilchard. Hang on. Yeah, this... Sometimes you get bait fish like yellowtail. So I got completely baited then. I have no bait left at all. So I think I'll throw a bit more burly out though before I toss another bait out. The tide is on the way out. It was high tide half an hour ago. Just gonna chuck a little few more goodies out into this wash. It's so exciting doing this because anything can grab your line in this type of situation. Some awesome fish. But by putting a bit of food in the water, getting a bit of scent out there, you're definitely going to improve your chances. So I'm going to flick that out there. Now I think I see a spot over there that I like the look of that I'm going to move over to. I think it's a slightly better vantage point for this wash that I've been throwing the burley into. And it's a little bit higher up than that other spot. So I'll likely get less, less wet. You may be able to see, you may be able to see this wash. Can you see the white water? Just there, it's actually pushing out that way. When the waves like this come in here, it swirls around in here and then it, it funnels out there. Okay, time to throw another bait out there. I've got something small. I'm not sure what I've got here, but it doesn't feel all that big. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. So this is my third cast with a pilchard. This is a pike. Different to what the Americans call a pike. But um, they're quite slippery, but slippery, slippery customers. They have some sharp top teeth, these guys. Now, I've never eaten a pike, but they are really good bait. They're good bait for kingfish, live, and mulloway. Many a mulloway has been caught on a live pike. But I don't need this guy, so I'm going to let him go. I don't have too far. To to throw him. Now I'm going to get another bait out there. So that was my third cast with uh, Pilchard. But I've been gradually putting a bit of burley out there, so the next half an hour should be the key time. So I've got a fish. I think this is another small fish of some kind. I caught a pike on my last cast. Hang on. It's taking me onto the reef. Got a tight line. What's going on there? That fish has reefed me. I had a fish on. I was perhaps um, a little bit gentle with it, so I'm just going to tie on another ganged hook because I'm sure I'll lose that. Yeah, that surprised me a little bit. So I won't let that happen again. I've got to get this up quick off the reef.
which I have done successfully. So you don't want to have your bait coming along low down where it can hook onto the rocks. Now I'm right near the edge now, but there's a wave there. That'll provide a buffer for me to get my bait up. That's amazing. My bait's basically untouched. Still got everything on it. I'm going to chuck a little bit of extra squid on the end just as a tantalizer. Just going to put that there as like a little squid tail on there. Yeah, so nothing took that. It's been sitting out there for about half an hour, but it's got to be in it to win it, so I'm going to chuck it back out again and see how we go. The waves seem to be diminishing with the tide. As always, waves come in sets. So there's little breaks in between the, um, the actual sets of waves. I might cast a little bit to the right of where I was last time. Whoops. That sneaky wave. All right, just gonna walk down here a little bit. Now my spikes that I'm wearing give me really good rip on, grip on the rock. So these little waves don't really bother you very much because you've got a really strong grip on the rocks. Okie doke. Alrighty. Now I'm always looking where I'm treading. Here comes another little wave. I think I'll just wait here. Till I climb back up again. So I can see where I'm walking. Now obviously no snapper was snipping, snipping past that squid before, but hopefully as it's getting a little bit later in the afternoon, some nice fish might move into the reef. That's what I'm hoping. I hope to turn around and see this rod buckled over like that. <laughs> got a fish. It's probably something small. It's silver in colour. Okay. This is Trevor the, Trevor the, sorry, Trevor the Trevally. <laughs> it's just a small Trevally. You see him there, lovely little fish. They love pilchards. Trevally come in all sizes, big ones, little ones. I don't mind eating Trevally, but um, I'll let this little guy go and um, see if he's got any big brothers. It's really important to keep a steady little stream of burley going out, because you want to attract some quality fish to your location. I've had bites every cast, little bites, Trevally, different things. But you certainly know it when something like a snapper bites your line, they're very aggressive and they just whack it really hard, super exciting. So that's what I'm hoping for, is I know there's some small fish out there, but with that burly stream, I'm hoping to attract some better fish. It's a lovely sunset, actually, it's amazing. I've done a lot of this type of fishing at night. In fact, one night I did this all night. I've done it all night, actually, a couple of times. Especially in summer with a full moon, when you've got good vision and the seas are calm, it's really good. Okay, so my set line has been fairly quiet out there. And I'm uh, just working this little wash just going to chuck my bait out again, I think. I'm pretty sure it's all intact. Yep, still intact, so I'll whack it back out. Just getting out into a nice area out there. It's not all that deep. I'm guessing it's maybe about five metres. But it's all broken reef and sand just here. It's a combination of reef and sand. I'm doing this in the afternoon, but it would ju be just as good early in the morning. 
you got down here before sunrise and got a burly trail going, you can catch a lot of good fish that way. Hang on, just had a nibble. Yeah, there's something small having a go at it. I'm just going to strike to see if I can set the hook on whatever it was, but no. Still got some bait on by the feel of it. Just going to lift this up with this little surge. Look at that. It's taken the guts out of my pilchard. When small fish are biting, that's what they often do. They just bite the guts out of it. So it's just a small fish doing that. Yellow tail or sweep or something. So I'll sacrifice this feist, the rest of this pilchard for a bit of burley. Flick it out in that wash. Okay, so I've got a fish. All right, so it's a bit of a, a bigger fish, this one. Which, as soon as my bait hit the water, obviously the burley is working. Got him in pretty close here. All right. Oh. Okay, so it's the customary salmon. I never fail with salmon. <laughs> Even though it's off the rocks, off the beach or the rocks, I seem to get them. I'm gonna let him go, chuck him back in. Because obviously the burley's starting to at least bring them in. Got a fish. Oh, I've got one. Oh, wow, that was close to shore again. <laughs> this is an even bigger pike. This is an even bigger pike than the last one. I haven't heard any of my fishing friends eating these things, so I'm not going to try. But yeah, he's a, he's a big fella. So, um, I've been fishing with pilchards for about an hour, flicking them out, tossing some uh, burley out in the wash. I've caught two pike a small trevally and a salmon which I let go, which I could have eaten. And my big rod that I've had set out the back hasn't really had any action. The first bait stayed out there, basically I threw the same bait back out again. So if you've enjoyed this video, this instruction, this beautiful scenery, make sure that you subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you next week with another video.